Okay, welcome back. So we've still got our data streaming from here into the multi-slider. The multi-slider is doing nothing but just showing us the contour. And then I've got this sent to the integer. And we know, <coughs> we know, excuse me, we know that we can bang out each one of these numbers and hear them as MIDI notes. Okay, so although I love the uh, AU DLS synth one, I would like to be able to use this note out to control other um, synthesizers. So I'm going to choose from max one. I'm going to go open up Ableton Live. Let's see what we can do with this. Okay, I have a fantastically named Ableton Live set called Dumb Sonification. All ready to go. So, this Balafon track, I have MIDI from Max 1. And if you're not sure about how to connect Max's input and output, you go into your Live Preferences under MIDI Sync. And once you've got Max open, you should be able to see inputs and outputs that say to Max 1 and from Max 1. Make sure you've turned the track on for each of these. Okay, so what this means in practice is that I should be able to send MIDI information from Max to the from Max 1 um, uh, MIDI device and send it into live and then play our instrument. So let's prove that. Let's go and choose from max one and trigger. And there we are. It's even got a little bit of delay on it, which I'm gonna take off just for now. Okay, so that means that our Metro should play the Balafon instrument. Okay, great. So it basically means that Max itself, we can devise our own sonification using um, some kind of data set. In this case, it's a data set that I've made up um, using the random Uzi approach. But of course, it could be your um, crash statistics from the RMS website. It could be births, deaths, and marriages in Nigeria, as I mentioned. Um, so we can actually synthesize, um, sorry, sonify what's going on in that data and send it elsewhere to be recorded. So obviously we can use a live um, clip to record this or record it directly in live. Okay, so, but I don't really find this Metro very exciting, so I'm gonna get rid of it. And instead, I'm gonna use one of my live tracks with a clip and a composed rhythm to trigger my sample and hold of my data set. Okay, so how do I do that? So just like we can receive MIDI from Max, we can also send it to Max. So we're gonna choose the two Max one MIDI device in a MIDI clip that's got no instruments in it. So it's sending MIDI out and I'm just gonna keep that playing. Okay, so let's stop that now. So, I'm gonna go back into Max. I'm gonna create a note in. And a strip note. Now, what does strip note do? Strip note takes every note that comes in from a MIDI device and only outputs the MIDI note on a note on. What's really important to remember with MIDI information is that a note number gets sent twice. The note number gets sent when the velocity goes on and the note number gets sent when the velocity goes off. That's really, really important. So what we're trying to do here is not actually receive any note information, but just the rhythm from our live clip in here. So to do that, we want the onset, the start of the note, and we're gonna strip that away, 
We don't even need to see what the note is. I'm just going to simply connect my strip note to here. And that means that every note that comes in from my Ableton Live set will trigger this sampling. So let's have a look at that. So I'm going to choose 2 max 1. I'm going to confirm back in here that my track is 2 max 1. And now my rhythm, if we remember the signal flow, should trigger my sampling. And my sampling of the data set will make a note and be sent out back to live into this track to play my balafon. Okay, and that's proved it. So, um, what's really interesting here is that whilst that's playing, what we can then do, of course, is change some of the parameters that are happening in the data set. So if I keep that playing, we have the same rhythm playing over and over. And I might like to speed up my data set, for instance. Same data, same rhythm, completely different cycle. Or I'd like to slow, might like to slow it down. So, a very simple approach to um, sonifying a data set. The data set itself isn't very exciting and it's looping around and around. Now that might not be a very useful way of using data. At the moment we're using it as a simple source for doing something interesting. Um, you might like to choose to use your data um, in a more um, strict and more fixed way than I am. But nonetheless, we can see how a data set itself can be a source for finding inter interesting musical variation. Um, and here it allows, um, we're allowing ourselves to connect Max to another program where we can compose elements and then allow our data um, to infuse those elements with um, some kind of uh, different um, melodic or, or rhythmic content. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And if you've got any questions, send me an email. Thanks, guys.